Um, so at the base, the fitness standards, what would you say are some of the absolute like non-negotiable fitness standards that every person should have? I mean, I think that everybody, every single person needs to be able to sprint at least a hundred yards. Like you, like you, you just have to, it's just, it's just a necessity of life. If you were in a, if you were in a really shitty situation, there's a recent video that's going viral on, on the internet where a semi truck comes off the side of the road and this lady grabs her baby and starts sprinting. If you don't have the ability to do that because you're too obese or too out of shape, like that's a big problem. Um, you know, there's also another video where a baby's in a, in a, in a, in a, um, a car. Yeah. Yeah. And it starts going towards the street and some uh, random guy comes and helps because this woman couldn't get up. I know, and I'm awful. not trying to shame that person. I'm just saying that, like, if you're looking at it holistically, you need to be able to run. And at least for 100 yards, maybe not 400, but at least 100. Right. You you should be able to at least, you know, sit down on something and stand back up without using support. Like you need to be able to get on the toilet and st- stand back up again. If you can't do that without using handles, like we have a problem. You need to be able to deadlift your body weight. Right? You need to be able to pick up off the floor something as heavy as you. And most importantly, you need to be able to get to the ground and get back up again. Those are like fundamentals that that are non-negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very similar to what I've outlined as well. Um, I listen a lot to uh, Peter Atia. I love that guy. Um, yeah. And, you know, his, his longevity standards, right? Uh, hanging from a bar, you know, for two oh, minutes. Yeah. Farmer's walks. Uh, so the sprint is probably for me, the biggest one that's my longevity standard is I want to be able to run down my grandkids. My kids are seven and four right now. So I got a long ways to go. Right. But what are all the steps I need to take in order to make sure that that happens? It's not just, Oh, I'm just going to show up at 75 and go for a sprint. No, because the wheels will fall off. Cause I'm assuming when you say like, when you say a hundred yard sprint, it's not in a certain time, it's no all out effort for a hundred yards, whatever That's right. time that, that takes, yeah. just so you don't end up pulling your hamstring, blowing your Achilles. Uh, that These are all so, so, so important. Um, and yeah, the sit, the stand, all those things. Uh, but I love the deadlift because that is raw strength on the posterior chain, which for whatever reason, I don't know what happened over the last 30, 40 years, because I'm kind of new to the whole like fitness game. but deadlifts have this weird boogeyman thing associated with them because it's like you're going to hurt your back i'm like well we don't say that about overhead press we don't say that about bench press we don't say that about squats so i don't know what happened with deadlifting because it's such an important movement we don't train it in so like why would you why in your case do you think like a body weight deadlift is so important you're watching i double check this but like the deadlift was called the health lift i'm I'm just typing it in to make sure i'm 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 99.9% sure. The health lift was a very simple exercise. Pile heavy objects on a machine and then lift it. Um, so basically, was the deadlift called a health lift? Formerly called the health lift, the deadlift being no, more than the safe and sound. So I'll, I'll double check this. But yes, there was something called the health lift back in the day. And it was basically a deadlift. And I, I don't know why the name got changed, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't matter. It's because deadlift is a foundational posterior chain movement. Like, you know, it, with appropriate midline stabilization, keeping your chest nice and tall and your low back flat and not having any type of isolated strain on a vertebrae, like, dude, you need to be able to pick stuff up. Like this whole idea <laughs> that like, you know, if you're, if you're That's um, the title of the podcast, by the way, <laughs> dude, you need to be able to pick stuff up. <laughs> like if you can't pick stuff up, like we have a fundamental problem. Like, and you know, speaking about this from a longevity perspective, like if you're a grandma, if you're a grandpa out there, do you think that your kids are going to want you to watch their kids if you can't lift them up? Hell no. Like, dude, am I going to send my kid to someone that they cannot lift them up and put them in a car? God forbid they need to get to a hospital or whatever. No, absolutely not. And it's a prerequisite for life. And so if we're not spending time training that, the problem is the kids get bigger and the adults get older. And mm. so those two things together start to really work. And like my son, Dude, he's, he's nine years old. He's 112 pounds of just like straight up muscle. And the issue is, is that, I mean, I could pick him up, but I mean, he's <laughs> heavy as hell, right? So, <laughs> so those are the kind of things I think the deadlift starts to really play a, um, you know, a big role in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to fundamentally totally agree on, on that front. And coming from a guy that was told by the military, don't lift anything more than 20 kilos basically for the rest of your life because I blew out my back. 
I think that's the biggest myth out there that once you hurt your back, lifting things are now outside of your realm of competence, which right. I think is just so, so it's such misplaced advice that I think it does so much more harm than good. Um, and it's unfortunate, right? It's unfortunate. It's, so, it's super unfortunate. 